we must be intent on active listening. And so often it's like people throw out these terms like, you know, you just need to get better. If you, if you want to overcome conflict with your clients, just active listening, you know, and, you know, improve your active listening. And it's like, awesome. How do I do that? Right? What is that? It's one of those things, maybe, you know, when someone's doing it for you or with you or to you, but you don't, um, you don't necessarily know how do I get there? How, how do I do that? So let me give you five tips for improving active listening. And number one, concentrate on your customers. Concentrate. So, you know, that, that could be focus, focused attention. Um, what, here's, here's a question for you. We're all a little different, but, you know, what do you do when you're concentrating? Um, think about that for yourself. What, what does that mean to you? Uh, maybe it's intently, it is that looking, it's, it's, it's giving feedback, body language. Yeah. You want, you want to show the person I'm listening to you. Oh yeah. Gosh. Okay. Um, all those kind of things, but you, you got to communicate that you are listening to them for, for, for summer that you're concentrating on them. It might be, um, you know, that, that, that focus you have when you're watching them read the lottery ticket numbers, right? You're, you're like, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, I got two numbers. Okay. Uh, whatever it is, you're, you're listening, you're concentrating, you're waiting on the next word that they have. Um, and you're giving that extra amount of focus. So concentrate on your customers. Number two, attending body language. So if someone has their back to you, um, if you have your back to, to someone that walks in, right? Um, if you have your, your back to, you're having a meeting with, um, with a customer and you're like, Hey, yeah, I'm glad you wanted this meeting today. I'm just going to be kind of organizing my office while you talk. <laughs> Come on. You know, that's not, that's not going to communicate that you care at all about losing them as a customer, as a client. So what is that body language? Like I mentioned earlier, the eye contact, the feedback, um, and for myself, uh, you know, my, my natural state, I, I want to expend extra energy, but, uh, and kind of be a little kind of moving around and looking around and, and get distracted. So it's not natural for me to sit for, for eight or 10 hours in that coaching session and focus on what the most important thing to that person in their life is right now, right? Because many times if a customer is coming to you, and they're, they, they have a problem. They have a challenge. They feel like they're being wronged in some, in some way. Right, wrong, or indifferent doesn't matter. That's how they feel in this moment. Perception is reality. That's the reality that they're experiencing. And so right now, I need to recognize the moment that I'm in and say, you know what? This is a customer. This is a client that I want to keep. I need to show them that I am going to make them the priority for the next five minutes, the next few moments that we have together, they are the priority. And I am interested in what they're having to say. So through our body language, we can do that. Um, number three, through uh, clarifying questions. So that could be help me understand, right? Help me understand how I can make this right. Um, help me understand exactly where things went wrong, because I want to fix this. Um, it, it's tone of voice, right? All those different things. Hey, help me understand how you would like this handled moving forward. I want to make sure we get this right. Help me understand is a great way of kind of starting a question that disarms, right? It's saying I'm interested and I, I want to understand what it is you're trying to share with me. It demonstrates you're actively listening to them. Number four, listen for emotions. Listen for emotions. So primary emotions are, you know, joy, sadness, anger, fear, and disgust. We have variations on these excitement, anticipation, anxiety, right? They could be, I don't know. I don't know if we're doing the right thing right now. Um, I, I reached, I reached out to a person with um, a, a campaign that I was doing a, a digital campaign, email campaign. And I, I felt like something was wrong and the deadline was coming up. So there was some anxiety, right? There was some some something going on inside of me that was, I know it was demonstrate, hey, I'm really concerned about this. And I, I let them know I'm concerned about this. Uh, I think we need to get this fixed. I don't think this is right, blah, blah, blah. And the person was patient. They said, okay, let me, let me understand. Let me, let me try to figure this thing out. And um, they heard, right? They heard the emotion in what I was saying and they recognized the moment and they worked to fix it. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I think we all know we're mature. We know, we know that in life, there are going to be mistakes. There are going to be errors. There are going to be glitches in system. That's okay. It's how we handle it, how we respond to those, how we uh, communicate with our clients uh, that we think that their problem is, is important, right? And, and something we need to do, we need to look into. Uh, there's some research. This is really interesting to me. If, if you don't find yourself naturally uh, empathizing with others, empathy maybe isn't a strong suit for you and you want to grow in that, there's some research out of Sweden that shows if you mimic a person's facial expressions, you increase your chances of feeling their emotion. So if they frown, they're telling a story and they're like, oh man, I was so bummed. And you, you just respond with, oh man, dang, that's so upsetting. You know, you, you mimic their face. You're going to feel those same feelings. Same thing. If they're laughing, they're like, oh my gosh, this happened the other day. This was, this was hilarious. This really made my day. I had this interaction with so-and-so and you mimic that response, you take on some of those same feelings. So I thought that was fascinating. In doing that, you can, you can almost feel the exact um, feeling that they're feeling. But how do you listen, right? How do you listen for these emotions? And the key is, uh, you know, you might be more likely to notice if they're, they're breathing quickly, they might appear nervous. Um, if their speech is monotone, or sounding, uh, they might sound down or kind of tired, um, exhausted today. Um, on the other hand, you can easily detect enthusiasm, excitement when someone speaks in a higher pitched and rapid voice, right? So all those things are cues on exactly how the person is in this state, in this moment. And that helps you um, identify what state they're in so you can modify your response to uh, overcome whatever challenge that you're having with your client. And then number five, uh, paraphrase to confirm. So paraphrasing, you don't want to parrot what they say. Um, that kind of sounds a little weird when you just repeat back exactly what they just said, but uh, you can paraphrase. So if they say, I bought your product, but it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. You might say, okay, I think I understand what you purchased from us is not working. Could you Help me understand, did it ever work or is it not working like it's supposed to? I just want to make sure I, I fully understand what you're saying, right? So you're paraphrasing and then you're also asking a question for clarification, kind of marrying the two together. Um, and another way you could do that is they might say, you said this process would be fast and easy and it's been extremely difficult to get a hold of you and I have wasted a ton of time. Wow, that person's probably pretty upset. And you might say, hey, I apologize. You, you, you were promised fast and easy uh, and a fast and easy experience. I'm sorry about that. And I will work to quickly get this revolve, resolved, right? So you're, you're picking up, you're listening to what they're saying. You're demonstrating that you're listening to what they're saying and you're working to resolve it and using words like, I will quickly get this resolved. So those are some ways that you can show your clients, your customers, that you're listening to them, that you care about them, you care what they're going through, you're connecting with them and, um, and you're resolving their problems. So let me just kind of sum it all up here. To build a connection with your clients, uh, you, you got to do it one day at a time. And it starts on day one. You want to begin to make those deposits. Don't wait until there's a blowout to start acting like you care. I'll tell you a, a quick story. I used to wait tables. I was not the best at it um, by any stretch of the imagination. I was more of a turn and burn style, right? So uh, I started out at Cracker Barrel and um, we got $2 tip from every person. That was the standard. So it was just about how many tables can I get through here so I can make more money? You ask them for a refill on coffee and then you drop the check after their food. That's it. Um, so I carried that in and, and I, I just, I don't know, I couldn't hold my tongue sometimes when I was waiting tables. And this one gal, it was a big table, it was like 15 people. And I was probably just short with them, a little annoyed. I think they were asking a lot um, of me. And uh, anyhow, they complained to the manager. And the manager came up, brought me in the kitchen. He's like, hey, Drew, you know, I need you. Uh, I need you to uh, be nice to these people. Normally they take your table away from you, but they, he said, I just need you to be nice and, and finish out this table. And so I walked to the table, I'm like, hey, anybody need any refills? <laughs> you know, trying to be the best, nicest me I could be. And uh, I'll never forget the lady looked at me and she said, don't try to be all sweet now. 
and and uh, so my wife and I, we say that to each other if we get in an argument, and then the other one apologizes. We'll say, "Don't try to be all sweet now," but um, it, it's that idea, right? Don't don't just try to be sweet or try to turn it on and be nice or care about your client uh, after something has gone wrong. Start on day one. Teach your team to build those connections, build the relationship with your client and uh, actively listen to them along the way. But uh, when you do hit a conflict, make sure that you are actively listening to them so you can overcome those challenges.